Yes, this is Martin Zender, and it is uh, four in the morning. Uh, four twenty-four. Sorry, I haven't gone to bed yet. Uh, four in the morning on November the fourth. Trump has won uh, election, and honestly, I say this: who cares? I mean, relatively, yes, I care. And I'm glad of it. And, uh, of course, my prediction of, uh, what did I say? 300 and something electoral votes? Who cares? Yeah. I was wrong about the numbers, but the truth of the matter is that the religious Western power has solidified power. And I've been calling for that for years. I've been predicting it for years, and it has happened. I mean, it happened four years ago, and now, as I predicted, it is continuing because it must continue. As I just said, Trump will win, and that's the main thing, because the final deception is going to be so slick that even the elite the elect would be deceived if possible. So we're going to have to love it. And I'm going to love, really, what's going to happen in the next year. It's going to be great. Having said that, if Biden had won, and it looked dodgy for a while there, I would have been in the same general mood that I am today because we have a God in the heavens and he is the one who gives those who will rule on the earth. It's his decision and he puts whoever he wants in power. So if he had put Joe Biden in power, as corrupt as that guy is, I would have said, well, we're in the fast lane. My realm is inherent among the celestials. And, therefore, what happens on earth is mildly interesting to me and somewhat important to me. But, overall, it is God's program. So, I'm untouchable. I am untouchable. That's why you don't see me going, yay, Trump won. Ooh, 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 ooh. I was right, Trump won. Because it's a sober moment in the eon, no matter what. Because we are in the fast lane, as John said, the Apostle John in the unveiling, chapter 1, verse 1, things that must occur swiftly. The events of the unveiling will now occur swiftly. Now, yes, if Joe Biden had won, they would have occurred even more swiftly but they're still going to occur swiftly. And you're going to see some things that you are not going to believe. I predicted $1 a gallon gas. Now, gas did go down to a dollar a gallon during the so-called pandemic, but I don't claim that because that's not what I was talking about. I, I could have taken credit for that. Like, see, I predicted it, but no, that was due to a crisis. The, the gasoline at the pump for you Americans, I don't know about in, a, in other countries, it goes down to a dollar a gallon now, is going to be based on a great economy. It's going to be based on that we're able to get our own energy out of the earth, maintain our energy independence. This, actually, this victory is huge because... It is the white horse rider on steroids, and you're going to see it in the next few months. Yes, there's going to be contention. There's going to be riots. There's going to be people saying, well, no, Trump didn't win. Forget about it. Forget about it. It's not going to prevail. As I've been saying for basically 16 years of a conservative type, religious type, um, 
God-based type takeover, it's here. And this is the this is the crossing of the T and the dotting of the I. This is it. This is it. It's good news. Really, it's good news. If Biden had won, it would even be kind of like better news. But I'm glad that Trump won. My flesh is anyway. Because we have the best of both worlds. I've said many times as far as free will goes and the lack of it, the absolute falseness of free will, God makes us feel like we have a free will. And we have the best of both worlds. Because before something happens, God gives us this feeling like it's all up to us. We have to do things and we have to make things happen. And that's meant to be. We're supposed to feel that way. So we have that excitement of thinking that everything depends on us. But then after something happens, we have the luxurious relaxation of knowing that this thing had to happen. Nothing otherwise could have happened. And so before something happens, we live in the relative and we are engaged and we feel like everything depends on us as we're meant to feel. But after something happens, especially if it's a bad thing, we rest in the knowledge that it had to happen. God is sovereign. I'm applying that to this time in history. We are very well situated, my fellow members of the body of Christ, because now, as I've predicted for a long time, we are on the brink of prosperity, uh, fun, um, good wages, good jobs. Pros um, I already said prosperity. Um, a dollar a gallon gas probably within six months. Eight months? You think? Eight? No, I'm going to stick with six months. And the best of both worlds is that we're going to be able to enjoy this time because we have pushed back totalitarianism. We have pushed back censorship. We have, not by much, pushed back centralized government. And we remain, for the time being, a, quote, free people. Compared to other nations, such as Cuba, Venezuela, China, this is a good thing. But this good thing will become so powerful, so popular, so accepted, and as I've predicted, Donald Trump will be even more accepted, more celebrated. People will start to come into the camp because everybody loves a winner. Sorry, Democrats. Everybody loves a winner. But we know that this will devolve into the new New World Order. Do you remember I coined that phrase during the Revelation series? I called it the new New World Order. The New World Order is this evil enterprise that announces that it's going to take over the world. It's going to lower the United States of America. It's going to just be this 1984 George Orwell type dystopian nightmare. And I said, it's too obviously evil. And I said, something is going to come and it's going to defeat it. And everybody's going to celebrate it as well they should, including myself. But then this thing that defeats the new world order will become the new new world order. But like Christianity, it will be dressed in white clothing. It will be dressed in sheep's garb. But it will be as evil as can be. Somebody said to me, Martin, you're saying that you believe that Donald J. Trump might be the Antichrist, and yet you're going to vote for him. You're voting for the Antichrist? Yeah, this morning I voted for the Antichrist. This morning. No, yesterday morning. Sorry, it's 4.30 a.m. 
I'm going to go to bed right after I make this video. Yes, I voted for the Antichrist. That's right. But he's not the Antichrist now. He's a guy who's standing up for freedom, freedom of speech, freedom to make a living, freedom to keep your business open, freedom to not wear a freaking mask if you don't want to, freedom to say what you want to, freedom to go to your house of worship. Yeah, me, Martin Sander, the guy who wrote the book, How to Quit Church Without Quoting God, is saying that I thank God that we have a leader in this country that allows people to go to church and that won't close down the churches. Yeah, that's great. So we're going to enjoy an era of prosperity. And why I say we have the best of both worlds is because this era of prosperity is going to turn on a dime. It is going to turn so quick after the man of lawlessness, lawlessness sustains a wound that appears to be fatal. He comes back from it and he is celebrated more than ever. And that is the beginning of the end, but I think before that we are snatched away because this is the this is the new new world order that will be dressed in a sheen of whiteness, the white horse rider. We know that Satan disguises himself as a messenger of light. And yet we all want good government. We all want sane rule. We all want freedom of speech, I think. We all want to make a fair wage for our work. We want to be able to assemble freely outdoors without being told that we have to go inside. We can only be outdoors for two hours. Then we have to go inside and we can only use our bathrooms if they're sanitized 10 times a day. And we can only have three households in one household at a time. Bull crap. That's done. That is freaking finished. And you can thank God for it. And I thank God for it. But it's going to become so good, so great, so white, so light, that it's going to be celebrated. And then it will turn and it will become the most vile evil. But as Satan's tactics, you should know them by now, he disguises himself in a sheen of whiteness, in a sheen of light. But it's evil. That's okay with me. It's okay with me. So you can see that it doesn't really matter to me who won because it's either obvious evil on the fast track or it's whitewashed on the slightly slower track. But in either case, we are in the year 5992. That is 5,992 years from Adam. F-A, I call it. Forget A-D. Forget B-C. I'm talking A-D. Uh, no, uh, uh, I'm talking uh, F-A from Adam. 5,992 years from Adam. As I speak to you, seven years away is the inauguration of the kingdom a little over seven years as i've said i believe the the tribulation the fabled last seven years of daniel's 490 year prophecy concerning israel begins in the spring of 2021 and it's game on after that so we have a few glorious months after which we will be gloriously taken away from the earth because we're not appointed to indignation. And when the man of lawlessness assumes that role, formally, we will be gone by that time. So, what have we got to lose? What have we got to lose? We have nothing to lose. We're in a great position right now. So you can thank God for it. So, I am going to stop talking about politics. Did you notice what I did yesterday? I didn't talk about politics at all. Talked about Romans 11.36. The day before that, I did talk about politics because it's a topic at hand, the topic du jour, and it applied to the book of Revelation. I may talk about it again, but it's not my primary goal. I don't live and die by who's president. I don't. We have a God in heaven who appoints those who will be in charge of the earth. He appoints them, whether it's Joe Biden or Donald Trump. And 
it's Donald Trump. As I have told you for probably 20 years. Because of Daniel 7. That the Western religion, a Christian religion, will stamp out the three Eastern religions. Buddhism, Hinduism, and Islam. And that has happened. So, right on. Right on. Tomorrow I'm going to forget all about politics. I'm just going to live in this world as I would no matter what. Because we have a God in heaven again and everything that happens on earth is relatively irrelevant compared to the greatness of God. I'm content. I'm going to go to bed. I have a bad headache. Uh, and I will talk to you about a topic. Well, I just finished Romans 9, 10, and 11. Thank you. And now I'm going to begin a new thing, and I don't know what it is yet, but I have a bunch of notes in my phone. I'm going to pick out the most apropos, the most exciting, the most relevant scriptural teaching, and I'm going to bring it to you. In the meantime, we have a God in heaven who oversees all the political actions on the earth. He puts in the power whom he will, and he is wise, he is all-powerful, and he has inspired me years ago to put my trust in him. I implore you, anybody looking over the shoulder of my regular viewers, to put your trust in him. Because the things of the world are temporary. The politics of humanity are temporary. And they're not important compared to what God is going to do on the earth very soon.